So yes, in this wrap up, I will be talking about The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager and Book of Night by Holly Jackson, two very polarizing books. What do I think? Wouldn't you like to know? Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia. Welcome to my channel. We are here to wrap up all the books and DNFs <laughs> I have from the month of July. It was a very interesting month. I had some books that left me perplexed and bothered. <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was gonna rate them, how I was gonna talk about them. And I am wrapping up Summer Ween and the India Chords readathon. So we have a lot to talk about. So let's just get on into it. Now, the way I like to do this, I start off with my DNFs, then my lowest rated books, and then the highest rated. Did I have a five star book this month? Pretty damn close, actually. Hmm, I just remembered because I just finished it today. But anyway, let's start off with the infamous DNFs. All right, so this first one, I gave a good go. The old college try, whatever they say. <laughs> um, I picked this one out from my Try a chapter video, romance books edition. So you already know I'm speaking of. Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Look, I tried, as I said. I actually got to chapter three and um, I just didn't care. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you missed my TBR video or the Try a chapter video, this book is basically about a young lady named Chloe. She has two sisters, I believe, and she suffers from chronic pain. I don't fully remember what she has. I want to say fibromyalgia. Yes. She survives a near-death experience and then she decides she's going to get a life. She's going to try doing a bunch of things they have on the back of here. Enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, blah, blah, blah. Have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex and do something bad. So I was pleasantly surprised in that try a chapter vlog that this takes place in the UK and the author is British and I love British humor and whatnot in the British culture, all of that good stuff. So I was like, oh, I didn't know. I got the audio book and I liked the main character, the man in this book, Redford Red Morgan. And I even was enjoying Chloe. Once I got past the prologue and got to chapter one, I was just kind of like, okay, nothing's really happening. Then I still went through chapter two and I was like, yeah, we're done here. I'm not going to force myself. Romance is just not for me. We're calling it a day. I may do another try a chapter with like fantasy romance or something like that, because I need something else in there to drive the plot. Just regular life, people going through work and whatnot, that just doesn't entertain me. I, we got into him and his life and what he was going through and being close to his mom and his art career. And I just didn't care. There was nothing driving me to keep reading. So I'm sorry, I did try. We're done with that. So <laughs> next. This next one I have on my Kindle. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. It is a short story collection called Mists and Megaliths by Catherine McCarthy. I chose this for the India Chords readathon. This was a readathon that's just like it sounds, all about reading indie books by indie publishers. You can go find out all the information about that in my TBR video if you haven't seen it already. They had a nice little bingo board set up and I had a row going straight across for this one. Um, I'll pop it up here on the screen, but I chose the read a host favorites, read uh, an author from a different country and read a book for the cover. There were some other ones on here I did too, like uh, clearly this is read a black, white, red, or blue cover. This is also read a book with under 200 reviews. And of course I will be relieving a review eventually. Yeah, so like I said, this is a short story collection. Uh, I just heard it described as slow horror. It started off strong for me. I really enjoyed the first story, Kragen, Kragen, not sure how to pronounce it. That one was about a couple who have a child and this child ends up having a, an imaginary friend who has, you know, some sinister things about them. And of course, what ends up happening with this child, this imaginary friend who may not be here for the right reasons. And like I said, that one was the way to get me started. I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this. I was excited. And then another story I enjoyed looking down in my journal, Two's Company, Three's A Shroud. That one was actually funny and the humor made me chuckle. And uh, like I said, I enjoyed that. There was another one that I liked called Jagged Edges. It was about this man who was just, in love with this train that was no longer in service. And he was going back over things that had happened when he used to work on the train. And then of course there's a twist to the story and we find out what this man has to do with the train and 
whatnot. So those were the three that I really enjoyed. And unfortunately, that's where the buck stopped for me. <laughs> I DNF'd um, pretty much all the rest. There were two DNFs that I actually have reasons for. One was called the Ice House. And it got to a weird part where this character was talking about her daughter and how she had on a nightgown. She could see her small breasts under her nightgown and reminded her that she's turning into a woman. So I was like, okay, we're done here. And then there was another story called Lore that was about fishing. I also found this weird because the author said she's vegetarian, but yet she was giving very detailed descriptions about fishing, which if you don't know, I am vegan. So I didn't wanna hear anything about fishing and things being done to this fish. So I was done with that. And so, like I said, I also just got to a point where I just was not into the writer's style of writing anymore. The author is from Wales and the dialect and stuff that she puts into a lot of her stories are from, you know, well, <laughs> the Welsh dialect. She actually had definitions for things. In the beginning of the story, she had intros to all the stories to tell you where the inspiration came from. But it just got to a point where I just had a hard time reading the stories. And I was like, you know what? Unfortunately, we're done here. But the way this readathon worked is that you could tally up how many pages you've read. So I read 40 pages and then I have another book that I read this month that also counts for this because it was also an indie published book. So unfortunately, I did not finish but I gave it a good try, just like with Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And uh, yeah, <laughs> let's move on. All right. We're gonna go to what you're here for. We're done with the DNF. And you know I had to finish this one for the Literally Dead Book Club because I was part of the discussion for this book, which I decided to put this video out after that aired because I was like, I can't skip reviewing this book and wait till August. So I will have that linked below. But of course I'm talking about The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. And you know already, like I said, if I'm talking about it now, it did not go well. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into too much detail because we did all that in the live show. Yeah, this was interesting. I had this one on my Kindle because it's a new release and I've talked about this before. New releases are hard to get at the library so I just went ahead and purchased it. This one is about a woman named Casey who is an actress and she also is recently widowed and she goes away to her family's lake house to deal with some things she's been going through since her husband's death. And she also is a heavy drinker, she has a drinking problem. So we're supposed to believe she's an unreliable narrator. <laughs> and she also meets this couple that live across the lake. The woman's name is Catherine and her husband's name is Tom. And she ends up befriending Catherine because one day she finds Catherine drowning in the lake and she saves her and all of a sudden they become besties. <laughs> And so one day Catherine disappears and Casey decides to try to find out what happened to her and she believes her husband is responsible. So that's what we have. Now, this book, I was like, okay, I went through so many things with this. I started off wanting to DNF it because it was just moving slow and I just wasn't into the main character or Catherine. They were just chit-chatting about her being a former supermodel and her being an actress and I just didn't care. So I was like, Luckily, this is for the book club because otherwise it would have been a DNF. So I had to go forward. And I could not use the audiobook to help me because the audiobook sucked. I talked about this. The narrator sounded like the woman was like 70, 80, and I don't get it. I thought maybe when I got to the end of this, I would understand why, but nope. Don't know why that was a choice. So I had to move forward on my own. Then I got to where I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere. Once it got to her watching the couple across the lake and you know, we got a little more intrigue and suspense and what's going on with this couple, then it got more interesting. And her drinking was not as big of an issue as it was for the character in The Woman in the Window. And that's one of the things I didn't like. Her days were just repetitive, just drinking and watching the neighbor. And I just got bored. But this one did not have that. If anyone asked me as I was reading it, I was like, it's not that bad. I don't see what everybody's complaining about. And I knew that the plot twist is what was gonna make or break this book for me. And it broke it. <laughs> broke it, smashed it, crushed it, done. <sighs> Okay, I'm just gonna say that. Look at what it's shelved under for genre or genres on Goodreads, if you want. Again, we talked about this in the live show, but I didn't expect it to take the twist that it did. It took us in a different direction, a different genre that I didn't know was coming, but I was still on board. I was like, okay, is this where, really where we're going with this? And my buddy, Erin Megan, had posted her review on Instagram and she said that it had a twist that was 
in this other genre that I want to mention because I don't want to spoil anything. So I was reading, waiting for that. And when it got to it, I was like, okay, this must be it because Aaron Megan said so. Like I said, I was still on board. And then it just went into the direction of the re damn ridiculous. Like I couldn't even be on board anymore. Couldn't be on board. When I'm reading a book like this, where there's a twist coming, I'm always trying to figure out what it could be. And the direction that I thought we were going in, of course, was not the direction we were going in. I wish it was, or I wish this was more simpler. I just feel like he was trying to do too much. I wish he had just kept it with something was going on with the couple and just, just, just give it a little something different. I wouldn't have been as mad as the direction we went in. I just can't say much. It was laughable. I was like, what the hell? Things didn't make sense. I was angry <laughs> because I was just like, are you kidding me? This is where we're going with this? Really? It just was bad. It was just bad for me. So anyway, because like I said, I can't say much without giving anything away, but you can check the live show for all my thoughts. I didn't care for the main character. Nobody was like, that likable that I was rooting for. So I was like, I spent all this time with this woman for nothing, how I felt but when I got to the end. I gave this one and a half stars and I'm probably gonna round it up to two because again, I enjoyed the majority of it until we got to the end. And I mean, enjoyed is still a stretch. It was bearable for the majority of it. <sighs> well, I guess I enjoyed it. The twist just ruined it. It just, like I said, it just took it into a direction that I didn't like and it just got to be ridiculous. I just really hope Riley Sager's next book is better than this. I'm not gonna rush to read it. I am gonna wait to hear what other people have to say because I do still enjoy his writing. But this and Survive the Night, I just don't know what he's doing lately and I can't be on board. So like I said, I will probably round it up to a two, but for you guys and Storygraph, it's a one and a half, so. Mm. Stay tuned for my Riley Sager ranking video. I'll be ranking all of his books and that will be coming in like a week or two so you can see where I've put them. But if you've been following along, you should pretty much know by now. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on. Next up, we have another book that is polarizing. You either like it or you don't. And uh, I'm not sure. You decide for yourself after my review where I fall. But I am talking about Book of Night by Holly Jackson. This was a buddy read with my booktube buddy, Tori. I will have her video linked below because her thoughts about this book are so funny. Where she put this book is not quite where I put it, but I'm not too far. Like I said, you'll have to check out her video. This is my first experience with Holly Jackson. If you're new here, I just got back into reading at the end of 2020. So a lot of authors are new to me. A lot of things are new to me, like genres and all of that. Cause I used to just read like urban fiction and then um, I tried to read some horror here and there, but all I knew was Stephen King. So those didn't go well back then cause they were too long. So after I read this and I started watching people talk about it and they were like, oh, it's not the typical Holly Jackson book. And I was like, what, what are her books? <laughs> So anyway, I do know a little more about her now. I do know this is her first adult book. She normally writes YA. I don't know why this is the cover because this book was dark. So I don't know why it's like this nice, you know, looks like it's a nice little wholesome book. It's not, but let me tell you what it's about. We are following a woman named Charlie who is a thief and con artist. And in this world, there is shadow magic. But basically what it is, is that people's shadows have abilities to like steal stuff and kill people and whatnot. And these shadows have to be recharged with blood. And Charlie has a history of doing dirty work for some of these people who do shadow magic and whatnot, have shadows that can do things. We also have her sister, Charlie, who is just obsessed with having her shadow get some abilities, magical abilities, that kind of thing. And so she's like on the web in the dark corners of the web, trying to figure out how to make things happen. So that was interesting. She still was not my favorite character. And then when I read the synopsis, it mentioned her boyfriend Vince, but I didn't know he was gonna be as big of a character as he was. He ended up being my favorite character. Her boyfriend Vince does not have a shadow. And in this world, it means pretty much like you don't have a soul, but we don't know why he doesn't have a shadow, what happened to his shadow. And the weird thing to me was that they didn't really know a lot about each other. And I was like, you two are in a relationship, you live together and you don't really know a lot. It's one of those things where she was like, well, he doesn't wanna talk about it. So I just leave it alone. Excuse me, no. But anyway, and Charlie works at this bar. She's a bartender and it's like a little seedy bar where you know, strange characters come in and all that kind of stuff. Now, 
This book had a lot of information, definitions, things you had to get, but this was not like Jade City for me, where I was able to still keep reading where even if I didn't fully get everything, I did have notes in my journal where I was trying to keep track of things that the author introduced, but then like she would mention things and then not explain it enough. And then just mention the term again later. And I wasn't going to look back at my journal because I was kind of like, whatever, I kind of get the point. I was just mainly interested in Charlie's story. I love the crime element of this book and the shady characters that she was dealing with. And so a big part of this book ends up being what is the deal with Vince? And like I said, also someone comes to Charlie and wants her to retrieve this book that's supposed to be like how people can find out how to manipulate their shadows. Manipulate, that's the word. Her sister Posey wanted to manipulate her shadow. There we go. <laughs> And so there's a lot going on. I was enjoying this. It really helped to buddy read this with Tori because we were chit chatting back and forth and it was just so much fun to get each other's opinion as we were going and find out we were on the same page. And she was reading a little bit ahead of me. So she would say something and I'd be like, wait, what? I, I, I can't wait to get there. I wanna know what you're talking about. And so the problem with this became like, house across the lake it came at the end i felt like the ending was rushed it got a little more confusing some things happened that were just unbelievable to me i mean of course we're in a fantasy world so things are going to be unbelievable already but this is an urban fantasy so it's set in our world but it was just some things at the end that i was like wait a minute how the hell okay and then we left off with an open ending. And when I finished this, I was irritated because I didn't know there was gonna be a book two, but I found out after I finished reading this, and this is one of the reasons why I'm kind of glad I don't come up with my reviews until after I post my wrap ups. It gives me time to think about them and wonder. When I initially finished this, I was like, all right, this is like one and a half stars. I just, Ugh, irritated with that ending. But then when I was reading other books and I kept looking over at this book, I still love the cover. And I think about the experience I had reading this with Tori and I still overall enjoyed being in this world. I also did the audiobook in tandem and I enjoyed the audiobook narrator. So I was like, I still generally had a pleasant experience. I just didn't like the ending. And I am interested in book two. Tori's gonna kill me. <laughs> But I am interested in book two because I want to know what's going to happen the way it left off with book one. A lot of people just said they just didn't understand the magic system, which like I said, it was not easy to understand, but I just felt like the other parts of the story were enough to carry me through that I didn't necessarily need to understand the magic system. Hopefully Holly will flesh them out a little bit more in the next book. I'm gonna settle on two and a half stars. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna bump it up or down. You'll have to check my Goodreads to see, but like I said, it was okay. I didn't hate it. So yes, I wanna read book two because I am intrigued to find out what's gonna happen after the way it ended. Now I made DNF book two, but have to stay tuned to find out. It comes out 2023. So anyway, there we have it. All right, next up, we have the Summerween selection that I chose. I did not realize Summerween was a whole week until after I posted my video and I saw other people's TBRs and I was like, oh, I could have picked a longer book or something. I thought it was just a weekend. But anyway, I chose a short story collection and I was trying to go for all the prompts. So I know I did do the Halloween covers, book with haunt in the title. I uh, did read in the dark. I tried to vlog. It was a mess because I was tired. I barely had time to film, so I scrapped it. But I did read in the dark. I forget the other ones, but if I think of it, I'll put it up here on the screen. But anyway, I chose Haunt of Southern Fried Fear by Ronald Kelly. Have it here on my Kindle. Don't think I was able to find it in my library. So like I said, it's a short story collection and um, all by the same author, which I prefer. I feel like when it's a bunch of different authors, I really struggle because some authors I like and some I don't. But when it's all by the same author, either you like their writing or you don't. And if you do, you pretty much are good. And I enjoy his writing. I've also read um, Halloween Store by him. So I already knew I like his writing. And in this one, I had three favorite stories pull up my journal, A Scream in the Night, Forget Me Not, and Sawmill Road, and I also really liked Anniversary. And then the other ones were just fine. They were, you know, enjoyable. I got through them, but they were nothing to write home about. I'll probably forget them. But my favorite, favorite, favorite one was Sawmill Road. That one got gory and yeah, this was my kind of short story collection. It was like an adult scary story to tell in the dark because a lot of these stories had to do with like vengeful spirits and revenge and that kind of thing. And I love stories like that. So I ended up giving this three stars. Like I said, I uh, overall enjoyed it. It's not up there with top four or anything, but I will definitely reread some of these stories, especially the favorites of mine. Maybe this Halloween, we'll see. And I'm also going to use this for the India Chorus Readathon because um, someone mentioned that to me and I was like, oh yeah, it is by an indie publishing company. So I'm going to use it for that as well. So let's move on to my final book of the month, favorite book of the month. <laughs> this last book, 
should come as no surprise because this is the third book in the series that I'm reading. And I had this for my June TBR, my birthday month, but I didn't finish it. So I just finished it today, actually. So it goes with my July wrap up, but I'm talking about Hell Divers 3 Deliverance. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I am so grateful to my daughter, which if you don't know, she picked this for me for my April TBR and it was the best book I read that month and I have just been continuing with the series. I love it. I always read this in tandem with the audiobook narrated by R.C. Bray. I just love him. He reads in such a cinematic way. I actually probably don't pick up the book much. I'm mostly listening because it's just so good. I listen in the car, I listen when I'm getting ready for something. Love it. But anyway, I can't say much because this is the third in the series, but we continue with the Hell Divers. I've talked about this book enough. It's a sci-fi horror. And I was like, I don't know if I've sold this good enough. This is a sci-fi horror. So if you like sci-fi horror, you definitely should check this out. It is very action packed, fast paced. Yes, it deals with a dystopian world, but it is not dark. And you know, there are things that come up, but it makes you think about things that humanity will do. It reminds me of Walking Dead because you come across other folks who are, you know, ruthless and there are creatures in this book they call them sirens and we found out in the last book why they are the way they are this is a post nuclear war world so like i said things have been created from radiation and they are just ugh gross but yeah so it's like walking dead where the zombies are the least of the concerns it's the humans and um i was so looking forward to this because in book two we were introduced to captain jordan who is ruthless and up to no good and his reign of terror continued in this book and i just loved every minute of it the ending though ah! if you've read this book let me know i actually clapped at the ending and this was just so good Four and a half stars for me, not quite five because we were introduced to some new characters, some new hell divers in this one and I just didn't really care about them as much. No one replaces the ones who were from book one. Yeah, so I did like one new character that came from that group, but the rest of them I just really didn't care about. And so um, when we got to chapters that had to do with them, I still enjoyed it because there was still action stuff going on with them, but I just wasn't invested in them character wise. So I do think I'm gonna be reading book four. I know it's called Wolves and I know why after the way this one ended. So I'm still invested in the series. I'm still gonna keep going. There's like nine, 10 books and he's still writing them. So I love this series. If I haven't said, check it out. Like I said, if you like sci-fi horror, give it a shot. Let me know in the comments below. I need to talk to other people who've read this series who are into this series. I know some of you have already told me and I love it, but just let me know in the comments, please. <laughs> Okay, so that wraps up all the books I read in the month of July. Like I said, it was very interesting because two of these books, the ending ruined it for me, but I still had a good experience. So I mean, July was a pretty fun reading month. Um, I just struggled with the Mist and Megaliths book, but the rest I pretty much enjoyed. I had fun trying to do the summer wing, reading in the dark thing. Hopefully next year I will be able to do a vlog because like I said, I got to plan better. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, what you have to say about them, your thoughts. I want to know. You know I respond to each and every one of you. And if you don't have a comment, but you just want to let me know you made it this far in the video, leave me a butterfly emoji i have a little butterfly thing that i can see over here so leave me a butterfly emoji and as always ways you can support my channel are always linked below such as donating coffee or money towards ebooks for me to read more new releases so i think that's about it for this video don't you <laughs> so until next time snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book like hell divers 3 <laughs> unplug as much as possible be kind to all kind, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.